So another overview of some of the new modules that were recently added to the VCV library. As always, all the modules I show in this video are available for free, so please consider supporting the developers. Now we start with a new module from Cella, Cognitive Shift, which is a unique shift register that you can use as a flexible sequencer according to how you patch things. Here I have one already connected with the clock. Eventually it will sequence kick all. Right, and as you can see, we have eight trigger or gate outputs. Right, so really I will use the first one here to trigger kick all, and I can start writing bits into the shift register. Right, as long as I hold this, it will continue writing. When I let go, it will just move on. Right, it will just continue shifting through the shift register. But I can also make this loop. Um, just by sending, for example, the last input back to the data input, and then again, record a few bits. Right, we can also erase them. Right, and now we have an eight-step sequence, right? It, continue, it continues looping. We also have four um, CV outputs here, continuous CV according to the active bits. So for example, I can use the one to four, which will use the first four bits to control the decay of kick all, and the three to six to control the shape. You can see this, you know what, let me connect this also here through the, through the scope. Right, and we have also built-in attenuators the new verters actually. Right, so you can have also modulation sequences. We'll add some delay to this. And um, of course we can also create shorter sequences. Here I have resonators from the same collection. And in this case, instead of using output eight, I will use output seven and send this back to the data input and again write a few bits. Right, so now we have a seven step sequence. But we can also have longer sequences, longer than eight step sequences by feeding back the bits back to the logic or to the XOR inputs. Right, so if for example I take bit two, So now we have longer sequences. They are still looping, they are still repetitive, but they are longer now. The same with the XOR. So again, according to how you patch things, you can create interesting, unique um, sequences and variation. We can also process external signals. So here, for example, um, I'm clocking the cognitive shift, and according to the clock, it will sample the LFO that I have here, a triangle wave from the LFO, if I connect this also to the scope. Right, you can see basically we get the same shape, more or less. Right, so now we use an external signal, an LFO, as our source. This I'm using um, to uh, generate a pitch sequence through a quantizer. and it will always uh, change a bit according to the frequency or to relationship of the frequency of the clock and the LFO. Right, I can make this slower. Or quicker. Right, and we have some variation. We can also create noisy textures by using audio rate signals, which is always fun. So here as the clock, I have one VCO. As the data input, I have a second VCO, both at audio rates. I have some feedback patching here, a few filters. We also have a new collection from Ondas with a drum machine, a trigger sequencer, a mixer with scenes, uh, effects, and even a clock module. 
So here I have the sequencer uh, already running. Um, it will eventually trigger the different drum voices. Kick, snare, hi-hat, open hat, right and effects. Right, so really I can start programming the sequencer here. Right. Maybe something like this. Right, so you can uh, trigger the different drum voices. And now we have here also probability for glitch, so it will jump between the different steps. Right, and we'll add some variation according to the probability. Right, just to add some variation. Now, this is all going to the mixer, right, and again, this is a mixer with different scenes. You can see each row is one scene, so I'm sending the different drums with different combinations to the different rows, right, and again, each of them is a, a different scene that you can switch between, so really, I'm going to switch just that you have here, and we have here also the count, how many times each row will uh, count before it moves to the next one. So here I have it set to four, for example. Here I have it set to two. So if I use a divided by four clock, right, you can see it's still row one, counting three, uh, four times, and then switching to the next one. Right, so like this you can create scenes and switch between them and create something with a bit more movement and variation. We can also use this mixer to crossfade between voices. Here I have three VCO units and I'm sending them again to the mixer as you can see with different combinations, right? And again, each row is, is a different scene. So I'm switching between them, but there is also the X fade feature here that will cross fade between the scenes. So we don't get clicks or anything and we cross fade between these different combinations of uh, VCOs. It's going through a filter, some delay. And we can also use this mixer to switch between effects. And um, here I have the effects module, the new effects module for the same collection. We have beat crusher, decimate, distortion, glitch, and crop. Each of them I'm sending to a different row. Again, each row is a scene and I'm switching between them just for extra glitch. There are a couple of new modules from Hetrick CV that add to the phaser collection. The polymetric phasers help with having multiple sequences with different lengths, so having polymetric sequencing. And the phaser random is something similar to the main idea of the Turing machine, where you can lock a random sequence and have it loop. So here I have two phase-driven sequencers. By the way, I made a whole video about this phaser collection. I will put a link in the description if you want to learn more about them. But in general, we have a phase signal that will scan through the sequences, right? I have here the phaser generator, and this will scan, um, in this case, through the two phase-driven sequencers, and eventually they will sequence two FM operators. Now, if I set, for example, one to have a different length, so the right one for now has 16 steps. If I set the left one to have, let's say seven, right, now you can see we have a polyrhythm. So both sequences will land on the one at the same time, but the seven step sequence here run slower, right? So we have seven steps, but it will run also at a slower rate. But with the polymetric phasers, we can make sure to have polymetric sequencing. So in this case, instead of having 16 steps, I'm going to set this to have 7. Right, and now we have the same rate, but a different number of steps. I can do this with the other sequencer. For example, let's say let's have 7 and 5. 
Right, so here we have now five steps on the polymetric phasers. The second output here will also change to five. And now they run at the same rate. Let me just reset everything. They run at the same rate, but they have different lengths. And like this, we can get polymetric. Right, polymetric sequencing. Again, one with seven steps, one with five steps. And again, we have also the phasor random module. In this case, it will modulate the shape and decay of Kikol. You can see the result here on the scope. For now, it's locked, right? But I can add probability of change. Then again, lock it all the way to the left, and we have a 16 step sequence now. I have here another example with two phaser gates sequences. Again, one is set to eight, uh, seven, and one is set to eight. Right, so we have two different um, lengths. This will eventually sequence tremor two, and two phaser random is also modulating things. So again, we have polymetric sequencing. There are a few new modules from SQL that are very interesting. We have three random loops modules uh, that are inspired by the Turing machine. I already made a full video about them. There will be a link in the description. But there are um, two sequencers, two new sequencers, the step sequencer and the trigger sequencer times eight. So eight rows of triggers and eight rows of continuous CV. Here I have the trigger sequencer sequencing a bass with key call and a few drums with three plets. Let me run this. Right, and again, we have eight rows. So I'm using four rows for triggering and four more rows for accents. And um, if you use the drum modes, right, the drums, uh, drum models here on plats, the level inputs become accent inputs. So I'm triggering them as well. Now, uh, an interesting thing about this sequencer is to, uh, the ability to save scenes and then switch between them, right? So here I have, it's called programs here. Here I have program zero, but if I switch it to one, right, we have a different rhythm and I have another one saved. Right, and you can sequence this uh, or switch between them with, again, continuous CV or with triggers or clocks. I'm going to use a divided by 16 clock. This you can change in the right-click menu, right program, input type, CV or trigger. Right, so it will switch between the scenes and we get more variation. The same also with the CV sequencer or uh, the step sequencer, how it's called. I have here two VCO units with two filters. I'm using two sequencers for pitch and a few more sequencers for modulation. And again, also here I have scenes saved with different lengths. Also, it will save the length of the sequences. Right, so also here I will use the same clock to trigger the scene change. And so now the drums and this sequence will switch together. I'm also using the eight row version here of this Turing machine, the random loops. Right, you can also here lock the sequence to the left or to the right, just like the Turing machine, but you have eight of them. You can see here I'm doing this with the clock division, locking the sequence. This will sequence and modulate the FM operator.
There's another new collection that was added recently, the Muffin Ziff, I guess, collection, which I believe also exists as hardware. And there are a few very weird modules in this collection you might want to experiment with. So here, for example, I have a Mongrel, um, which has two oscillators. It has also ring modulation. So I will trigger it with a multiplied by four clock. Right, I can tune each, each oscillator. Right, so I will go once with C3 and once with G3. Right, we have the tail that we can also modulate. This is the decay. We can change the waveform with the snarl. Also this we can control. And the growl will add ring modulation. Also this I will control with the sequencer here. Right, add some delay. There's also a dual noise module. It's called the Bobcat. Right, we can trigger each of the noises individually. Right, have decay for each of them individually. So here I'm triggering them with Mito, I guess, or Mito, which is a clock divider. So I will use once a division of three, once a division of five. And again, we can change the sounds. So you have dual noise. There's even a tone generator, so like in the old phones, that you can generate tones by clicking the numbers. Um, right, so here I have one, again, triggered by the clock divider. This is going through a bandpass filter, and I have here a Deviant, which is a random generator, a dual random generator, just modu modulating things. There's even a cricket module that will also generate weird sounds. And I have here a few more um, generating some drums, a kick, uh, some weird sounds. But before I unmute them, um, thank you again for watching. I hope you will go and explore some of these modules. And again, please support the developers. Cheers.